Hey, what's up, y'all? If you're new to my videos, my name's Raj. I'm the owner and doctor of physical therapy at 3CP Performance. If you're watching them for a second or third or repeat time, welcome back. So today's video topic is regarding, unfortunately, Kristop Porzingis' ACL. I'll go into why and how it happened, specifically how John Giannis' contact and how Kristop's landing impacted the ACL, and then I'll go into what it means for his future. If you like the content, if you like the channel, feel free to subscribe, leave comments and questions below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so a couple nights ago against the Bucks, Kristaps tore his ACL when he landed awkwardly. I won't replay the video. I'm sure you all have seen it by now. But to understand you know, why he tore his ACL, we got to first understand the mechanics of landing and what the body's trying to do while landing. So the key thing about landing is force absorption while keeping you upright. And there's two major systems that come into play when you're trying to land. The first is your muscles. The muscles in general are the major shock absorbers of your body. They dissipate and attenuate force across your joints and ligaments. Secondly, you have sensory systems, specifically your proprioceptive and vestibular systems, which act as sensory feedback for your brain. Tell your brain where it is, gives it, give itself awareness in space, and it allows to make small corrections and adjustments and activate certain muscles to help. All right. So in the actual play, those, the muscles and sensory systems for Kristaps were compromised in two specific ways. So the first way was after Kristaps, he's going in hard, right? He dunks and then he gets hit by Giannis and then who rides him down to the ground. So that high flurry of activity, getting hit after dunking and then coming to the ground, that's going to throw you for a loop, your sensory systems. I mean, I've seen people get in fights after being just touched in the air while going up, right? It's a high risk situation. It's really, really tough for your body's sensory feedback to adapt to that. And then the second aspect is the landing. So look at the picture right here. You'll see that the way Kristaps lands is, plays a big part in why his ACL ruptured. So there's five kind of key things that influence ground reaction force. We call it velo uh, vertical ground reaction force, VGRF, that influence that force going up through your body. One is mass. Second is the height that you jumped from or you, that you're landing from. Third is your knee, whether it's soft or bent or extended. Fourthly is if you landed on your mid or forefoot versus if you landed on your heel. And then lastly is if you landed on two feet versus one feet. So in Kristaps case, we all know he's a big dude, 7'3", 285, mass is check. Uh, secondly, he landed on an extended leg, on his heel, on one leg. And he also did, he, he had the biggest jumper, but we know that even jumping from a small height is going to increase ground reaction forces. So he definitely checks off four out of, the, out of the five things, okay? And so what happens in this scenario is when he lands like that, normally when we land, if you jump and land, you're going to bend your knees and land on your midfoot, forefoot, and that's going to allow those muscles in your foot, in your lower body, and in your quadriceps as well to attenuate that load that's going through your knee joint. And at the same time, you have the sensory feedback system that's also getting all that feedback when you're landing in an ideal situation. But when you're landing in this non-ideal, awkward, unanticipated situation, now you have all this load going through Kristaps' ACL. And if you watch the video, right after he lands, you can see that knee buckle. So imagine this is the tibia, this is, excuse me, this is the, this is the femur, this is the tibia down here. When he lands, that tibia gets pulled forward, that ACL tears, and then it, it juts out for a second and then comes back. That's that knee buckling. And so, you know, unfortunate injury, especially because there's really nothing Kristaps can do about it in that case. But what does it mean 
for his future and going forward. So the first silver lining is the fact that it's it's not, it's not in a non-impact injury. Whenever I see a non-impact injury, I'm always concerned because it underlies usually some body or movement deficiency in that person. So that, that's a big positive. Secondly, you know, ACL timelines and protocols these days, it's so common that you have really well-established protocols. I mean, I'm assuming he'll be back on the court by you know, nine to 12 months. However, that being said, there are also a couple of realities about ACL injuries that we know. The first is that there's some research that shows that after an ACL reconstruction, you're six times more likely to re-tear that ACL or get injured in the other knee as well. And that's specifically for populations under the age of 25 who are involved in sports that involve running, jumping, and cutting. Kristaps is 22. Basketball certainly involves, involves those three things, all right? And then secondly is we also know that it takes about two years for you to get full symmetry back between your legs. And symmetry between the two legs is a key indicator for reduced injury risk. So for him to be back to 100%, it's going to be roughly about two years. I mean, I expect him to be back by 9 to 12 months, but let's be patient with him as he comes back, not rush him into things. It's critical for reducing that long-term injury risk. All right, so hopefully you learned some things. That about does it for this video. Again, always feel free to subscribe if you like the content. Feel free to leave comments and questions below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want more content on a variety of things, head over to my website at 3cbperformance.com.